three months, but their form has slumped dramatically, and the highest they can now finish is fifth. Injuries deprive them of Dion Dublin, Ian Taylor, and Alan Thompson. And John Gregory has left out Steve Stone and Gareth Barry. And Brian reverted to three centre-backs. Yeah, very much so. I think John Gregory is expecting a tough game here today. And of course, he's got one eye on European football for Villa next season. They look very strong in that midfield area as far as defensive players go. Grayson, we expect to do a man-to-man -man marking job on Manu Petit. Shimiko will be getting and looking to get close to Patrick Vieira. And can Jochen with his pace and Merson with his craft try and put this dominant Arsenal back four and goalkeeper David Seaman under any sort of pressure? Well, whatever the outcome of today's game, there'll be celebrations in Ray Parler's household tonight. His wife, Karen, has just given birth to a baby girl, Georgie. Congratulations to them. Paul Merson is back at Highbury for the first time since Arsenal sold him almost two years ago. A legendary figure here, of course. 15 years at Highbury. He played over 400 games and won two championship medals in his time here. Notably, a change of referee today. David Ellery apparently has a back injury, and he's replaced by Dermot Gallagher. Well, Arsenal suffered their first defeat in 20 Premiership matches at Leeds on Tuesday night. What a fantastic run that has been for Arsene Wenger and his team. 15 victories, four matches drawn. They've only been defeated in the league four times all season. And one of those defeats was against Aston Villa in December at Villa Park in quite one of the best games I've seen all season with Arsenal going into a 2-0 half-time lead and Villa coming back to beat them 3-2 in the second half. The same sort of nail-biting tension and excitement virtually guaranteed today. And remember, we will be giving you up-to-the-minute updates of what's going on at Old Trafford between Manchester United and Tottenham Hotspur and indeed those crucial relegation games involving Southampton and Charlton. It's Aston Villa in their change strip of blue shirt to get the game underway and the first touch for a former Tottenham man Calderwood and a slightly nervy start by Southgate who almost allowed Anelka with a shooting opportunity in the first few seconds. Keown has it back for Arsenal, a former Villa man of course Martin Keogh, here's Lee Dixon, Bergkamp's header, Parler, Bergkamp did well, Nelson Vivas blamed for the Leeds United winning goal on Tuesday but playing in place of Winterburn anyway, and on to the loose ball there, and a difficult decision perhaps for Dermot Gallagher straight away as Vivas went down, the play on was the verdict. There's Keo. No real appeal in fairness from the Arsenal players, although the fans certainly did. Paul Merson, beaten to it by Vivas this time. Any hint of a penalty there for you, Brian? No, I think Nelson Vivas was certainly looking for it. I think Ricardo Schimicke did a great tracking job on him, but Arsenal, as you would expect, Alan, starting with a lot of pace, a lot of fire in their bellies. And they are passing the ball around very well. Calderwood back to Michael Oakes, who's replaced Mark Bosnich for the last three games. He had been first choice most of the season anyway. Header away by Keown. Draper leaving it to right. Bergkamp has it back for Arsenal. And a lovely ball from Vieira finds Parler. Southgate the covering defender. And Nelka in the middle. Petit in support. Elka wants it played early and gets it. Clearance by Watson. Adams. This is Vivas. Straight to Colin Calderwood. He's played all seven games since his move from Tottenham in March. Bought when Ugo Ehiog, now in possession here, was injured. Watson. Mercer. Julian Jochen, Villa's leading scorer this season. Adams has it back, and now Vivas for Arsenal. 
all Arsenal's defeats in the Premiership have come away from home. Sheffield Wednesday, Wimbledon, Villa and Leeds. They've not lost a Premiership game here at Highbury for 18 months, 28 games. What a record. Well, they certainly set the early tone for this game, Alan. I think some of their passing has been outstanding. And really, straight away, Villa are on the back foot. And they are playing as a back five. Certainly the two fullbacks are really having to come and complement and help Calderwood, Ekihog and Gareth Southgate. I mentioned that Arsenal have only lost four times in the league this season. How ironic that in winning the title last season, they lost half a dozen games. Here's Parla. Petit comes to help him out. Turn in favour by Grayson. Adams got that ahead of Jochi. Grayson in again. Well, that's exactly the type of role that John Gregory wants Simon Grayson to employ in that midfield area. Get tackled in. Don't allow Vieira or Petit any time and room on the ball. I hear there's been a goal at West Ham. West Ham one, Middlesbrough nil. As Overmars attacks here for Arsenal. Well, Mark Overmars, very clever, and he always looks to do this. Coming inside onto his favoured right foot. Great pace, looking to charge and power at the centre of that Aston Villa defence, but certainly a ride with his shot. He'll be disappointed with that final effort, but that's a terrific run, and that's the type of pace that will cause Villa problems. Just confirmed that Frank Lampard has given West Ham an early lead against Borough. That could be significant, of course, to Aston Villa, because if West Ham win, they could go above Villa into fifth place and therefore qualify for the Intertoto Cup. Here's Joe Chip, Mercer. Now right. It's short for Grayson. He did well to return it to Merson. Strong challenge by Petit to win it back. Parla. Held off Draper, who has then fouled him. That's good play from Ray Parla. Great strength there and determination to make sure that he retains possession. Petit along this perfect Highbury surface. It really could be August when you look at this pitch. Not May. Here's Burkett. Not a bad effort. Well, it nearly crept in, didn't it? And Dennis Burkamp, you cannot allow him to turn and face you like he did there. And really, that isn't far away. He's just dragged it a wee bit, but Michael Oakes certainly scurrying away to his right to think that he's going to have to make the save, but you cannot allow Dennis Burkamp that type of room to turn at you. Scored both the goals when Arsenal were beaten 3-2 at Villa in December. Calderwood. Adams header. This is Vivas. Overmars. Tricked his way inside cleverly. The shot blocked by Ehion. Adams. He certainly invited the challenge there from Draper. And then from Merson. Well, already it's fairly evident that Arsenal are certainly in the mood here. Whatever happens at Old Trafford, they're determined to finish what has been an excellent season for them on a winning note. Grayson, back to Watson. Adams winning it back. Villa fifth in the table, one point ahead of West Ham, and victory for Villa today would assure them of that place in the Intertoto, which could lead to a UEFA Cup spot next season. Parler. Arsenal chasing a much bigger prize guaranteed at least a place in the Champions League as runners-up. Anelka, Petit, this is Vieira, Villa backing off, the return ball from Dixon, and Vieira's shot, fine save by Oakes. Well, Michael Oakes needing to be on top form there, it's a terrific strike on the edge of the box from Patrick Vieira, great build-up, ball came from Lee Dixon, just threaded it through a body of players and a fantastic effort from Patrick Vieira. Dixon. Awkward clearance by Calderwood. And Dixon wins it back. Creeper determined, though, he wasn't going to get any further. But this is the start Arsenal wanted, pinning Villa back in their own half. But 
see. Parra. Vienna again. Whoops. His eye off the ball there. Luckily, he got away with it. Overmars. Vieira miscontrols it again. Here's Joe Chip. Merson up in support. Otherwise, surrounded by red shirts. And that challenge on Vivas has left him in a great deal of pain. Play goes on with Overmars. And he are winning it back. And Vivas is flat out at the moment. And does look quite badly injured, I have to say. And of course, that would be a real problem for Arsenal because he's only playing today uh, as replacement for Nigel Winterburn, who's broken his nose. Well, it went down very quickly, didn't it, with this challenge? And it's a clean challenge from Julian Jochim. I think it's a block that may have just perhaps tweaked his knee ligament somewhat. And there's the block tackle. And I think it might have just opened his knee ligaments up. Thanks for the back running fine, OK. Yes, that was a very speedy recovery and a good ball as well to Overmars. Nelka. Dixon. Now Petit. Vienna leaves it to Adams. Grayson with the challenge on Burkamp and the Dutchman fouled him in the end. Simon Grayson making his first start for over two months in the Villa lineup. Well, that's Burkamp really battling there. And again, we talked about the importance of Simon Grayson in that midfield area. Trying to win tackles, whether it's on Vieira Petit or Burkamp just dropping short. Overmars could only deflect it straight into the path of Watson. Merson. Back again to Merson, who's offside, however. The referee has allowed play to continue. Arsenal effectively must win. They could win the title with a draw, but they would need Manchester United to lose by two goals at home to Tottenham. And certainly winning is a habit that has been formed in the two and a half years Arsene Wenger's been here. They've had victories in eight of their last ten premiership games, the Gunners. Both they and Manchester United bidding for their 12th title this afternoon. Foul there on Joe Chip. Well, really, Martin Keown ought to know better to make tackles like that. Certainly that area of the field, and it's given Miller a chance, just a, a slight respite, because they really have had to defend for long periods already in this opening 10 minutes. Colin Conglewood across to take it. Clearance. Nelka, third cap straight on to Overmars. Glorious ball. And Vieira arriving in support. Once again, Michael Oakes to Villa's rescue. Three times now in the opening minutes here, he has saved possible goals. Petit, one back by right. Now Calderwood. Draper. Petit challenging Watson. Villa still on the back foot. Right clearance. Petit brings it back. Then Parla to Vieira. Ejio gets it away. Real pressure on Villa here. Draper for that. Given away to Vivas. Vieira. Now an Elka. Petit looking for Overmars in the box. It was a difficult one for Southgate, and Wright came to help him out. Well, it was a great opportunity for Arsenal, with superb pace from Mark Overmars, but what a great ball through from Dennis Bergkamp, and full credit to Michael Oakes, the Villa goalkeeper, it's a wonderful save with his feet. But really, the lovely touch, and that was a great ball from Dennis Bergkamp, and there's Mark Overmars, you see him in so many situations like this, one against one, full credit to the goalkeeper. Right. Easy clearance for Adams. Straight to Shimika. And Adams first to reach it again. Ehion. This is Draper. Nice touch from Joe Chip. Gets it back from Draper. Merson doing well. Joe Chip, two in the box, Shimika, and surprisingly, right, the wing back, Bergkamp under pressure. This is 
is Dixon. And Bergkamp again, looking for that early ball. Got it wrong this time. Ehiog. Clearance by Watson. Dixon not getting the time he was hoping for there against Schimmicker, but did the right thing. Liverpool have taken the lead at Anfield against Wimbledon with a goal by Patrick Berger after 12 minutes. Liverpool beginning the day in eighth place where they could, if other results go their way, finish as high as sixth. Kiel winning it back. There's some activity on the Arsenal bench, and I fear that Nelson Vivas may not be able to continue because of that earlier injury. Yeah, he's struggling with a knee injury at the moment, and they're trying to get Frederick Lundberg on whenever the ball goes out of play. I think that's Villa that's probably hoping the ball will go out of play because they really are having to do a lot of defending in this opening period. Now, Jungberg is an attacking player. He's hardly a uh, like-for-like -like replacement for Vivas. It'll be interesting to see what Arsenal do tactically. Well, you may have thought with a defender coming off, certainly Steve Bold on the substitutes bench may have been the one to get the call, but, of course, Arsenal do need goals also. If they do get a win or a draw, it's important that the goal difference is right. Draper in possession for Aston Villa, and now the ball has finally gone out of play. And Jungberg will come on. He's made over 20 appearances since he joined Arsenal in September, and an unhappy end to the season for Nelson Vivas, publicly blamed by his manager for the goal which beat Arsenal up at Leeds on Tuesday, and now injured in his final league appearance of the season. Jungberg on in his place. Well, what Arsenal are going to do is put Petit to left back, which will really leave a big hole for me in that central midfield area. Ray Parler has switched from wide right to play in that central midfield position, and Frederick Lundberg, a more traditional role for him, wide right. It was a real uh, dilemma, I guess, that for Arsene Wenger. The very player he wouldn't have wanted to lose, having already lost his first choice left back in Nigel Winterberg. Yeah, this would be hugely disappointing, really, and having to make changes so early in the game. Because Arsenal were very comfortable, they were getting into a very nice rhythm, and it's uh, whether they will now maintain that same momentum and tempo. Right, wriggling his way out of danger, but gives the ball to Bergkamp. Now Petit, who of course has played most of his career as a defender before he joined Arsenal. Here's Overmars. Just about got away with that. Well, from Draper. Overmars got back to deny him. Villa well, could break here. Mercy. Adams gets it away. Well, it's not often Villa have really got into uh, the last third, and now they need to maintain some sort of confidence and composure just to get the ball down and play and they need to have Paul Merson on the ball on far greater spells than he is at the moment Draper decent ball in over Shibika's head right on the back post well Arsenal close to conceding then and breaking on the counter attack with pace and style Dixon and Elka now Bergkamp and Elka Shot disappointing, even though the build-up had been impressive. Well, this is a great opportunity for Aston Villa to counter-attack. Super ball in from Mark Draper. And really, you can see Dixon getting drawn towards the penalty spot. And he was looking for Frederick Jungberg to try and cover him at that far post. Lundberg had lost right altogether. And right on his favoured left foot. Very, very unfortunate. It's a couple of years since he scored a goal now. Alan Wright. Reminder that Liverpool are leading by one goal to nil against Wimbledon. And West Ham leading by one goal to nil also against Middlesbrough. No score yet, crucially, at Old Trafford. Joe Chin for Villa. Watson on the right. Merson in the middle. Dixon gets it away. Good little spell for Villa this. Ehio. They should gain some confidence from this because they've created a couple of half chances in the last three or four minutes and uh, they've got to maintain that. The form 
a slump villa in the last three months just three wins in 15 league games in that period nine of those games ended in defeat and they also lost the two coming into this match against manchester united and then last week at home to charlton the form book suggests that it should be an arsenal win here but at this nervy stage of the season anything can happen right over the head of Merson and Vieira Petit Overmars Carla this is Dixon Arsenal forced to go across the field to find room here and back again Keep ball at the moment for the champions. Well, that pass from Jungberg really uh, dropped to Lee Dixon in it, and Schimmicker's tackle dumps into the ground and earns Arsenal a free kick. And it might even be a booking as well for the Villa man. Yeah, he can have no complaints, Kelly Ricardo Schimmicker with this. It's clearly late. It's clearly after Dixon has played the ball. What it has done is given Arsenal a free kick in a dangerous area. Yellow card for Ricky Schimmicker. Uh, camp with the Arsenal free kick. Adams coming round the back. That's why Ekiog realised he had to get there. Well, that's an important header from Ekiog. Great ball in from Burkamp. Certainly cutting the goalkeeper out. And Tony Adams was looking for anything at the far post. A good run. Sweeps away. And there's Ekiog just to manage to clear the danger. Petit with the corner. Vieira's header, and away, almost off the line. I think it was Grayson. Bergkamp. Overmarks. This is Petit. Shout for handball from the Arsenal fans. Corner is the verdict. And Arsenal are beginning to now camp in this goalmouth area. This is a super towering header from Patrick Vieira. He climbs well, and there's Simon Grayson doing a great defensive role on the line. Vieira's there again. Well, they've got to sort that out, Villa. That's twice he's come to meet the corner. Not exactly unchallenged, but certainly not marked closely enough. Well, Stephen Watson this time charged with picking Patrick Vieira up in the box. And he's there, and he's having to stoop very low. It came at a difficult height for him. Incidentally, if Arsenal win today, they would equal last season's total of 78 points. And today is the first anniversary of them clinching the double with their FA Cup victory against Newcastle one year ago today. Burkamp, Lindbergh, given away, Joe Chin, Mercer. Good tackle by Vieira, excellent play by the young Frenchman. Anelka, Petit. Vieira just knew instinctively where Dixon would be. Jungberg, a further attacking option now for Arsenal. Dixon. Ehiog gets it clear, but it's only as far as Patrick Vieira. Now Petit. Shoot was the instruction from the Arsenal fans, a bit optimistic. He opens it up. Lee Dixon. Bergkamp. Lovely ball. Parla. Well, Villa really, Alan, cannot just concede the type of territorial advantage that they're giving to Arsenal at the moment. They're withdrawing in numbers, but really, you'd think it's a matter of time. Great tackle there by Ehiog. Certainly an unfair contest physically, wasn't it? Ehiog against Overmars. Dutchman to win himself a corner, but uh, this is a great little battle, isn't it? I think Eggenhardt was disappointed not to have got something for his team. Another Arsenal corner. You sense the breakthrough is edging closer for them. Adams header this time. Go get Well, again, Stephen Watson seems to be finding himself the man to either pick up Adams and Vieira when he's coming up on this penalty spot. 
Again, a good corner in, and Adams rising very well indeed. And it's Stephen Watson, the man there. And you would have thought either Southgate, Calderwood, or perhaps Ekihog would be looking in those particular areas. Strangely enough, Aston Villa have been a regular stumbling block for Arsenal. They've only beaten them once in the last seven meetings, and that was three and a half years ago. And Villa are the only club in the Premiership who could do the double home and away against the champions. Ball by Vieira, just too far for Jung there. Well, I think you can see there there's a tremendous amount of possession from Arsenal in the Villa half, and really Villa having isolated attacks through either Merson or Joe Chim, and John Gregory will be certainly worried about the domination that the home team are having. Petit with a through ball. Picked off by Wright. Villa keep giving it away. Although they are ultimately disappointed in their season, Aston Villa. It's the fifth time now in seven Premiership seasons that they will have finished in the top seven. It's a very good record. For a club of their size, they will tell you, not good enough. John Gregory has done a wonderful job in his, well, just over a year in charge. They want to make changes in the summer, bring in fresh players, and make another genuine title challenge next time round. Overmarks. Parler. Dixon in acres of space here. And in early. Jungberg shot. Well, again, it's another chance for Arsenal. And Frederick Jungberg finds himself on the edge of the box. Great sweeping move. Once again, Arsenal do spread the ball around extremely well. Dixon's crossed in. And Elka's little knocked down. And really, Jungberg will be disappointed not to hit the target. Well, there's a great roar spreading around Highbury here. As long as that's not a false alarm, it would appear that Tottenham Hotspur have taken the lead against Manchester United at Old Trafford. We'll confirm that to you as soon as we hear ourselves. But Tottenham Hotspur won. Well, I told you it only takes a second, Mark. It's another long ball. This time it's Everson who wins the header. And he doesn't need a touch except to direct it towards goal. It's once it's over. Transistors must be on to hear the news, and it has been confirmed, and it's fantastic news. Can now Arsenal reaffirm that advantage? Well, there's a lot of football still to be played this afternoon, but there could not have been a happier bulletin if you're an Arsenal fan. Les Ferdinand has scored for Spurs. Manchester United nil, Tottenham one. Merson. Joe Chip. Let's remind you that Manchester United still hold the upper hand. They've got a point advantage over Arsenal. And of course, uh, in terms of goal difference, they've got a goal advantage. And in terms of goal score, they're well ahead. But uh, all that could count for nothing. I'll tell you what, he's just heard the news and he's had it confirmed to him. He knew the cheer had gone up and he was saying to Nicholas and Elka, come on, now here's our chance. Shibuka shot almost dampened those rather premature celebrations. Jungberg. Parler. Well, someone has flicked the switch here. Suddenly, the atmosphere is totally different. And there's a spring in the step of the Arsenal players now as well. Petit for them. Player who scored more goals this season 
than at any other time in his career. Well, it's been a slight frustrating afternoon so far from Arsenal. They've had lots of possession, but they really only have troubled Michael Oakes on one occasion. That was over Mars' shot. Paolo will be disappointed not to hit the target. But Arsenal have got to maintain that concentration. They know now that Spurs have gone 1-0 up, but they really still have to win this football match. Well, we can accurately say that never in Arsenal's history has a goal for Tottenham been greeted with such enthusiasm by the Arsenal fans. <laughs> Here's Dixon. One back by Draper. Now Merson. Here's Grayson. Now Watson. Southgate under pressure from Anelka, just bought himself a bit of room. He gives it away to Keo. Well, it's equally vital, of course, what's going on at the bottom of the table today. And there's a crucial goal for Pahars at the Dell. Southampton lead Everton by one goal to nil. They started the day, remember, with two points more than Charles West Ham. I've gone further in front now, Mark Keller scoring West Ham 2, Middlesbrough 0. So if Villa get wind of that scoreline, it might redouble their efforts here at Highbury as well. Still a lot of drama in the making, and a chance for Schimmicke! Well, he could have been a hero then, and a villain to Arsenal. Well, this is a great chance from Ricardo Schimmicke. Not certainly known for his goal-scoring feats, but really Martin Keown commits a cardinal sin trying to get in front of Jochim Jochim using great strength and that isn't far away but Ricardo Schimmicke having a lot of time a lot of room Patrick Vieira perhaps just doing enough to put him off he knows it's a good chance and he's disappointed coming up to half an hour gone at Highbury Arsenal nil Aston Villa nil at Old Trafford with a similar amount of time elapsed it's Manchester United nil Spurs one a goal by Les Ferdinand here's Merson drilled along the deck to Watson Jochim on the far post here that was an important interception by Dixon his heart must have been in his mouth that was own goal territory that well, this is a great clearance from Lee Dixon. It's a super ball in from Stephen Watson. Got pace. It's always going to cause trouble between the defence and the goalkeeper. And there was men waiting at the far post to take advantage. In this first corner, a quarter of an hour and a half remaining. Linesman wants over Mars to move back a centimetre. That was important. Southgate. It was disappointing, even more so. Uh, John Gregory was delivered there because they had a great opportunity for a corner piece. And then really the ball is having to get thrown back up the field and they're having to defend once more. Here's Grayson. Spots the early run by Merson. Adams wins it back. Vieira. Overmars skill from the little Dutchman, Jungberg takes over, the referee had already decided that was going to be a free kick. Overmarks. Now Parler. Dixon. No camp in space. And back it goes to Dixon, at least that was the intention, the Calderwood read it. Southgate's clearance, only Merson in an advanced position here for Villa. So easy for Vieira to win it back. Up at T. Anelka. Holderwood flies it into Arsenal's half. Keo winning it back. Well, again, bags of possession from Arsenal, but they really are struggling just to unlock this Aston Villa defence. Petit. This is Parler. 
Bergkamp to his right. And really, that was the ball I think he should have played. Easy for me to say, I know, but uh, it looked the better option. Yeah, it's getting quite frustrating now. And really, Manu Petit just driving at the heart of this Villa defence. The ball works very well indeed to Parla. And what he doesn't see is Dennis Bergkamp in oceans of space to his right-hand side. And that was the perfect option. Always easier from the commentary box, admittedly. But in terms of goal attempts, Arsenal well on top here. Well, it's so long now since Arsenal have lost a league game here. Hardly anyone can remember it. It was Blackburn Rovers 18 months ago. And Arsenal, the only club in all four divisions with an unbeaten home record in the league this season. They need to maintain that record today to have a hope which they most assuredly have got at the moment. Manchester United, a goal behind against Tottenham. Bergkamp. Oh, the last. Oh, now then, the referee's got to make a decision here. Watson's in trouble. His saving grace may be that Gareth Southgate was a covering defender who's alongside Watson. Great play from Overmars, super feet, in with one, pushes it behind Stephen Watson. I think that's accidental. I don't think Stephen Watson is meant to do that, but Gareth Southgate was alongside him and has just saved Stephen Watson from a red card. Yeah, spot on, I'm sure. That's how Mr Gallagher will have interpreted it. However, Villa's problems might just be only beginning because this really is a very dangerous position. And the likes of Bergkamp around, even more dangerous. He's backing away, Bergkamp like a marksman, with the target in his sights. free kick Palmer and Trier had to dive in but it's still gone through to Joe Chip and that's a useful ball as well danger here oh, what a great tackle by Petit but he turned the clock back to his days as a defender then Overmars Jungberg And gets it away. Fiera. What about that skill from Dennis Bergkamp? Magnificent. And here he is again. But well, it hit his own player, Anelka. Well, it's very much one way traffic at the moment. And since Arsenal have heard that goal, they really are beginning to turn the screw on Villa. But really, they cannot find that opening. And this was as close to it, perhaps with the free kick that happened just a wee bit earlier. And this is the tactic that Villa have done on numerous occasions this season. I remember them doing it at Manchester United against David Beckham. Gareth Southgate clearing off the line then, clearing off the line this time, and he saved his side. Yes, good homework, good preparation, if you like, by the Villa coaching staff to uh, realise where the danger was coming from. There's Jungberg. has lost it. Joe Chip. Great tackle, Vieira. An equally good one from Draper. Merson. Watson. Lovely flick to find Merson from Draper. And Arsenal now terrier-like in the challenge themselves. Parler for that. Third count. What a beautiful layoff. This guy is a joy to watch. Dixon. Petit. Red shirt swarming everywhere around that Villa box. Overmars in possession. Parler. Jungberg. Finally Southgate gets it clear, but the pressure incessant at the moment from Arsenal. Oh, 
Burkhan got a touch on there and almost into the path of Patrick Pierre. Well, you've got to give full credit to Aston Villa. Arsenal have had so much possession, but just look at the numbers back there. Really are defending in great numbers, great depth, great organisation. They have come very well prepared. And here's Bergkamp. Good clearance, Gareth Southgate. Yep, when one's created out of position, as Ekihan was there, Gareth Southgate covering. Overmars back to Petit. Now the little Dutchman again. Here's Vieira. Bergkamp. Great skill again from Bergkamp. Overmars wins it back. Jochim the only outlet for Villa. And he's lost it to Adams. Seven minutes of the half remaining. Overmars. Petit finds Parler. Now Dixon. Jungberg. Two in the box here. Nelka and Bergkamp. Polo would get it clear. How long can Villa hold out under this pressure? Jungberg's done brilliantly. Dixon shot through the crowd. <laughs> well, scrambled it away is the only phrase to use about that incident. Vieira trying to find a way through the crowd. Dixon. Overmars. Well, he nearly did creep in, but Mark Overmars once again favouring on to get himself onto his right foot, always looking to come inside. And once again, you can just see the amount of Villa bodies trying to throw themselves in the way. They're determined to hang on to this whenever possible, and that isn't far away. Blackman Rovers, ironically, already relegated, have scored up at Newcastle, Jason Wilcox. two most important goals that have come about so far on this dramatic final afternoon of the Premiership season are the Tottenham strike by Les Ferdinand against Manchester United at Old Trafford and Southampton's goal against Everton at the death. Lovely ball there from Merson to Schimmicke. There's Joe Chip. They've got an extra man. Three here as Joe Chip shoots and Seaman had some trouble getting across. Jochim had just glanced up there, Merson was free to his left. Well, it's a good break from Villa, and they've needed it because they've been under so much pressure, and Julian Jochim doesn't see Paul Merson to his left-hand side. Perhaps if he did, he was the better option. He had a lot of freedom, a lot of room, and certainly a striker in form. Chelsea have taken the lead against Derby County. Abayaro, the scorer. Chelsea already guaranteed third place, of course. Camp. Whoops, him and Draper having a little altercation, and then Calderwood getting involved. And as a former Tottenham man, that's not going to make him too popular here. <laughs> yeah, it's a time for cool heads as far as Arsenal are concerned. They've just got to get back to creating chances. It's for T. Adams. Dixon. Ball if Parler can reach it. Oh, that was good defending. Calderwood thought he'd uh, prevented the corner there, but the linesman disagrees. Well, he wasn't happy, was he? He felt that uh, he did enough to keep the ball in play. Half time approaching. Nil nil. Manchester United one down at Old Trafford, though. Oaks came through the crowd, and it was a brave decision by the keeper. doing really well there against his uh, former teammate Lee Dixon. And Arsenal get the throw. Pio. This is Petit. Now Overmars. Vieira. 
empty again. Third camp. He was caught there by Wright. It's going to be another Arsenal free kick from an almost identical position to the one in which Bergkamp almost scored a few minutes ago. Yeah, it would be interesting if uh, Michael Oakes decides to pull Gareth Southgate a little bit further back and put him on the line. And so far, he hasn't. It's a little bit further out, this one. Southgate wants the bloody defenders even further out. Bergkamp hammers it in, and it almost found a way through, but it was a good save through that crowded penalty box by Oakes. And I hear that David Beckham has just equalised for Manchester United up at Old Trafford. So it's now Manchester United 1, Tottenham Hotspur 1. The advantage swings back towards Manchester. That was greeted with absolute silence. Obviously, the fans have decided not to uh, transmit that information to their players. Either that or they've gone home. Overmarks. Third count. Well, it's becoming a wee bit frustrating for Arsenal at the moment. We've talked already about the domination they've had as far as possession, but really they cannot carve enough clear-cut chances to get this elusive first goal, and really that's emphasize the type of efforts on goal so far we're at it today when everyone's minds are in two places watson on back well by adams and the early ball for anelka might be too strong but oaks it's a sprint to get there i think we shouldn't be surprised to perhaps see canoe start the second half or be shortly on in the second half because they do need goals from somewhere now and he's done pretty well in his appearances as a substitute so far and who scored four goals in his last five games there's Petit Parler took that down well and Elka Jungberg on the right. Bergkamp. And that's a good ball for Parler. Well, he got the cross in well enough, but Villa just had so many defenders there. Here's Bergkamp. Now Dixon. Parler. It's a great challenge by Vieira. And he drives on over Mars. Not that all wrong, really. And there he are, happy to guard it out of play. There's confirmation of that goal at Old Trafford by David Beckham just three minutes before the interval to equalise Les Ferdinand's earlier goal for Tottenham. And Leeds United, who Clyde Weinhardt, have taken the lead against Coventry at Highfield Road. Leeds guaranteed fourth place, whatever happens. And there's the half-time whistle. Well, without doubt, the biggest cheer of the half was to greet the news of Tottenham's early goal at Old Trafford. Rather more subdued atmosphere, though, as the half-time whistle sounds. Not only have Manchester United come back to equalise, but Arsenal have failed to score despite a host of opportunities. Twice Villa have cleared off their own goal line and there have been countless other chances as well for the champions but frustratingly for them at the moment they go in at half time goalless and they also go in to hear the news that Manchester United are level again with Spurs. It's nil-nil at Highbury. Here. And it's 
Dominguez who brings it away for Spurs. In a teasing way. Right. Anderton, they've enjoyed plenty of space in midfield, Tottenham. Sherwood. Ronnie Johnson gets it partially away. Edinburgh can't cross it because the half-time whistle goes. Well, Alec Ferguson will be feeling a bit better, thanks to David Beckham. But great credit to Tottenham Hotspur. Who have really put everything into this game. They brought Les Ferdinand back today, and he rewarded that decision with a goal that shot the Manchester United faithful all around the world you have to say with their support but David Beckham banged in an equaliser with a touch of controversy about it we're halfway through at Old Trafford and it is 1-1 we'll be back after the break the famous dream team are and then the FA Cup final Manchester United against Newcastle next Saturday the statistics of the first half here at Highbury underline I think Arsenal's domination 17 goal attempts five of them off target and uh, two of those were actually cleared off the line by Villa defenders <laughs> Just two cautions so far, and remarkably, only one offside decision. And in terms of the uh, domination, Brian, again, the facts tell the story, really. Yeah, very much so. Backing up what we've talked about all through the first half, there's a tremendous amount of possession, but really they'll be disappointed, Arsenal, having had that many opportunities to score goals and not have a goal to show for it. Well, without doubt, the biggest cheer here was to greet the news that Tottenham Hotspur had taken the lead against Manchester United at Old Trafford. And here's a look at that goal scored by Les Ferdinand, despite the desperate attempts of Peter Schmeichel to keep it out. Let's take a check on the half-time scores elsewhere. No goals here or at the Valley. Charlton, of course, in relegation trouble. Chelsea, Babayaro scored for them against Derby. A Weinhardt goal giving Leeds a half-time advantage at Coventry. Liverpool in front, thanks to Patrick Berger against Wimbledon. You've just seen Manchester United and Spurs. Jason Wilcox scoring for already relegated Blackburn at Newcastle. Nil-nil Forrest and Leicester. Pahars scoring for Southampton, a crucial goal that could be. And two for West Ham, Lampard and Keller at home to Middlesbrough. Well, here at Highbury, the first half has been a tale of what might have been for Arsenal. They really have been dominant from start to finish and so many near things, Brian Marwood. Well, it's incredible because Arsenal counter-attack superbly well on this occasion. It's a wonderful ball from Dennis Bergkamp. Mark Overmars really pace in abundance, takes him away from the Villa defence and it's shot is very well saved by Michael Oakes. It's a tremendous save by the Villa goalkeeper to keep his side in the game. Well, then not once but twice Arsenal thought they'd scored, but Villa had the right man in the right place at the right time. Yep, they're having to concede a lot of ground, and it came from a set piece, and Patrick Vieira has rose majestically there to head Manu Petit's corner goal bound, and Simon Grayson was a player on the line. And then it was Dennis Bergkamp. Well, Villa have done this before this season. They've put a man near the post. It was Gareth Southgate on that particular occasion, and he came up trumps. A tense afternoon here in North London, and it could get even more nail-biting. Arsenal nil, Aston Villa nil. It's also a draw at the moment, up at Old Trafford, between Manchester United and Tottenham. Stay with us. A sky... End the shot. I know Sherwood complained about a foul, but it was six and one and a half a dozen of the other. I felt the push. But Beckham in there, unstoppable shot at the right time. I'll be surprised if they don't go into it. Sherwood wanted game. a free kick for that, but there wasn't much in there, was no, there? No, not at all. So, 1 1 then at Old Trafford. 
At Highbury, Arsenal are playing Aston Villa, and they've had their chances, I can tell you that. Remember, goal highlights as and when. It's live on Sky Sports 3, but the Gunners have found Aston Villa difficult opposition. That's a good stop, Frank, isn't it? It's a bad stop. stop if you're an Arsenal fan. Yeah, it was a great stop by the goalkeeper there. And uh, Arsenal will find it a little bit heavy weather. Over Mars has been Look in this be position two or three times. He could have cut across to an Elka. He has a shot with his left foot, which isn't his strongest. And, uh, but this is a chance here with Free Bergkamp. kick here. Keep your eyes on the line. Gareth Southgate went back, and it's a good job he did. Off the line. Yeah. So no goals at Highbury. Charlton can't find a way through against Sheffield Wednesday. Chelsea are one up against Derby. Leeds one up at Coventry. Liverpool are beating Wimbledon 1-0. Blackburn one up at Newcastle. No goals at Nottingham Forest. Southampton 1, Everton 0. West Ham 2, Middlesbrough 0. And there's more where that came from. Gee, what an afternoon this is. Manchester United right now still top. Southampton right now out of trouble. Don't go away. Well, a choice of live sport coming up for you later tonight on our three Sky Sports channels. Over on Sky Sports 1 at 7, live Super League, Warrington against Leeds. On Sky Sports 2 from 8, there's live US Tour Golf, day 4 of the Byron Nelson Classic. And here on Sky Sports 3 from 6, more live football as Real Madrid take on Oviedo. So that's live sport on three Sky Sports channels coming up for you later tonight. Well, if we'd just heard the final whistle, rather than the half-time whistle, this would be the position at the top of the Premiership table. So, in other words, if the two scorelines at Old Trafford and Highbury remain as they are, Manchester United would be champions. And at the bottom, with Southampton leading and Charlton only drawing, that would mean Charlton being relegated. But that's only as the scores stand at the moment. And with 45 minutes of nail-biting tension and drama ahead of us, things could change. Well, Brian Marwood, it's folly, isn't it, to try and predict in this of all seasons, which has gone right to the wire, what might happen. What's your guess at the moment? Well, I think it's uh, been a frustrating afternoon so far for Arsenal. I think they've had so much domination. Uh, they've played well enough up till the last third and they really just can't quite find that creativity. Nicholas Anelka has been disappointing for me. He hasn't had enough chances, not on the end of any real through balls, but Overmars has got to be in the game more. Dennis Bergkamp also, they're the key for me if Arsenal are to score goals. So as things stand, Arsenal have to score. A draw for them is not enough if Manchester United get it at least a point out of their game against Tottenham. So referee Dermot Gallagher about to set the final 45 minutes of the season here at Highbury underway. Can Arsenal retain their championship in the next three quarters of an hour or will that magnificent trophy be resting for the next 12 months at least at Old Trafford? Here's Petit. Overmars making the run and he tries to get inside Watson with the through ball. That'll go for a corner. And the noise level cranks up a few notches. Keown and Adams have both come forward. Adams came to meet it challenge there with Ahyog and he felt it T looking for more movement and finally Adams comes to meet him on the near post another difficult ball for Ahyog there well, it's important defender Hugo Eggihog really because the balls are raining in now and he's going to have to be on his toes to defend this corner. T with the corner. Pitched away by Vieira inadvertently. 
Here's Joe Chip. A long ball by Wright. Merson. Ehio. This is Watson. Joe Chip got the layoff wrong. And he's injured himself in the process. Strange incident there. Didn't seem anyone near him as he went down there, Julian Jochim. He actually collided with Tony Adams just as he was spinning to get in behind Adams. He caught Adams' thigh, I think, and uh, he's feeling worse for that. Petit. Overmars. An Arsenal goal really would change the picture quite dramatically. Manchester United draw, an Arsenal win, then Arsenal are champions. Here's Julian Jochim, and they've got an extra man here, it's Paul Merson, what an irony this would be if he punishes his former club here. Adams just got in the way and did enough, and indeed the travelling Villa fans think they might have had a penalty out of that. Well, this is a great break from Villa, Jochim's pace once again, and Paul Merson gets caught in two minds. I don't think that's an obstruction. And Jochim... Almost got through again. Good work by Adams. A nervy start to the second half by the champions. But Jungberg driving on for them now. Right with the interception. Well, everybody's really willing also to get forward at every opportunity. I don't think it'll be too long before we see Canu. I really think that it's uh, perhaps down to him. He's come on and been so effective as substitute over the season since he's joined Arsenal. And I think today could be such an important game for him to do also. Petit. Arsenal have to remain patient and calm in this volatile atmosphere. Vieira. Great run by Patrick Vieira. What a very good tackle as well that stopped it from Gareth Southgate. I'll tell you what, Alan, this had to be so well timed. A great driving run from Patrick Vieira. And just look at Gareth Southgate. He makes a decision very early. And here goes Overmars. Great run by Overmars, tucked back in. Oh, somehow cleared off the line as Vieira tried to get it through. Overmars, Vieira's there again, and again it's cleared. Will it ever go in for Arsenal today? Well, Southgate is a hero at the moment, and this is unbelievable defending. Great attacking play from Mark Overmars. The ball comes out to Patrick Vieira, not once, but twice. And it's Southgate that really throws himself in the way, because that was heading for the top corner. trying to get on the end of the corner and has done so but committed a foul in the process free kick Aston Villa well I don't think you'd argue and certainly discourage Arsenal from scoring a goal in this period because they've had so much pressure and there you can see the incident Tony Adams so determined to try and win the header well who'd be a football manager on an afternoon like this Keown's clearance. Right. Grayson under pressure. Finds right. Now Draper. Joe Vieira wins it back. Burkamp. Lovely little ball. Over Marks. He's got an elka to his left. Now he's gone the other way. Petit arrives in support. Back to Overmars. Tries to set it up for Burkamp to drive, and the deflection again takes it away from danger. And I understand there's been a further goal at Old Trafford, and it's been scored by Manchester United. Andy Cole has given them the lead against Tottenham. Manchester United 2, Spurs 1. Adams trying to find a way through single handedly there. so hard Arsenal at the moment it's just that little bit of luck that perhaps you need that little bobble in the right direction just isn't coming their way Andy Cole had only been on the field for a few minutes as a substitute and he got that critical goal for United now Jungberg for Arsenal trying to kill it into the top well they're just missing that vital spark aren't they at the end of what has been total domination for Arsenal. Villa are defending in great numbers, they're defending extremely well, and this is a 
certainly a wasteful effort for me by Jungberg. Getting onto his left foot, trying to curl the ball in the top corner. Certainly not troubling Michael Oakes. Confirming the scoreline from Old Trafford. Manchester United 2, Tottenham Hotspur 1. And if Manchester United win that game, it doesn't matter what Arsenal do here. United will be champions. Draper catching Vieira in the face then. Flailing hands and arms and Mark Draper there just trying to make sure Patrick Vieira doesn't go around him and just catching him accidentally in the face. So at the moment, the title balance is swaying in favour of Alex Ferguson's team. They have a 2-1 lead. They had a point advantage at the start of the day anyway. Remember, they have an advantage also in terms of goal difference and goals scored. Arsenal are going to need something special both here and 200 miles away to retain their title now. It's amazing how quickly things can change around, isn't it? You know, this, uh, this place was unbelievable. 10, 15 minutes into the game when they'd heard the news from Old Trafford that Spurs had scored, but now it's one of despair, one of resignation perhaps that the title is now slipping away. Riedler was the scorer and Newcastle have just equalised against Blackburn Dietmar Hammond the scorer there there's Keogh Getting away Jochim with a rather risky back pass look how deep Dennis Bergkamp is to try and retrieve the ball I know I had to look twice there, I couldn't believe it was him. In the right back position. Here he is again. Adams. to Overmars. It's a block tackle with Stephen Watson and it was a fair challenge by Watson. And Mark Overmars just twisting and turning, trying to find a room and a way and a route into the box and it just isn't happening for them at the moment. Well, the Arsenal fans are doing their best to try and encourage their team again. But at this particular moment, at what, 12 minutes after five on the final Sunday of the Premiership season it is beginning to look like Manchester United's title or as Brian Marwood correctly says things can change very quickly in this game no! Dixon lifting it forward headed away by Calderwood Arsenal have to forget about what's going on at Old Trafford now and just concentrate on winning this game themselves because without that victory it's pretty apparent now that their hopes would be in tatters anyway the canoe is beginning to warm up now and I'm sure the Arsenal fans will want to see his introduction as soon as possible because he really can influence and change the course of games and that's certainly the order of the day right now Keown finds Petit minutes of the second half gone, still goalless in the last match of the season. Here's Jungberg. Tempting Bergkamp forward down the right. The crowd rise in anticipation. Jungberg couldn't quite get onto the cross. But the header behind by Ehiog means Arsenal have a corner. He really has been a tower of strength, hasn't he, Hugo Ehiog? On his reintroduction to the Villa side, and uh, this is a magnificent leap, of course, up against Frederick Lundberg, and he has got a height advantage. Displays that again with the headed clearance. There's Bergkamp though. Clever little ball through to Vieira. Jungberg, Vieira again. An Elka shot and a great save by Oaks. Well, it just won't go in for them at the moment, will it? It's a super save from Michael Oaks. Once again, two vital saves from the Villa keeper. 
Well, if Manchester United are champions at the end of this afternoon, I think they should send a bottle of champagne down the motorway for this young man. Well, he's beginning to establish himself in the side with all the problems that they've had with Mark Bosnich, but again, scrambled, half a chance there, falls to Nicholas and Elka, the foot comes back very, very quickly indeed, good power, and that's a great instinctive save from Michael Oakes. The man determined to do well, of course, to prove that he should be first choice goalkeeper for Villa next season. throw Vieira wins it back Melka's layup Vieira's there again Bergkamp's going to be offside is he? no yes I thought so but it was a late flag well, it was very late wasn't it from the referee's assistant Dennis Bergkamp you can clearly see there straight in the offside trap good line from the Villa 3 centre half Southgate Egghog and Calderwood now Merson there's Joe Chip Watson, Merson, Grayson being forced into the corner, but he's done well to open up the cross. This is right. Schimmicke. Foul committed by Keogh and Joe Chin. Well, this isn't the area of the field that Arsenal want the ball. They wanted back up, challenging for position. And trying to create as many chances as possible. Right, delivers it in. And the air with an excellent clearance. It's gone straight back to the free kick taker. Now right. There he on. And he and Joe Chin have a misunderstanding and Arsenal could profit. Petit. Bergkamp. And Southgate was holding him back there. Arsenal free kick. And the Dutchman in control again. Harlan. Dixon with a little chipped cross. And an easy catch for Oakes, who's been faultless today. Here's Mercy. Draper. Well, Mercy did brilliantly there. And he's back in possession again. Schimmicker and Wright combining. Frustrating little period for Arsenal. They can't get the ball off Villa. Well, in the end, Arsenal will get the ball deep near their own corner flag, and that's the opportunity to send on Kanu, the Nigerian international. He's not ready yet. Well, I think he was ready. I don't think Dermot Gallagher, the referee, was ready to bring him on. 30 minutes of the season remain. Can the champions retain their title? Or is the Premiership crown going to Old Trafford? Manchester United are beating Tottenham Hotspur by two goals to one, having come from a goal behind. Arsenal, frustratingly for them, are still locked at nil-nil against Villa. And surely now can you really eventually get on. This man can cause problems, and uh, Nicholas Anelka having a very ineffective afternoon. And can Canu be the man to really change the fortunes for Arsenal? Well, there have been suggestions that Anelka could be leaving Highbury in the summer. They've been denied by Arsene Wenger, but that might, might be his last appearance here. Only time will tell. straight into the action and wins a corner well, a great chance from the Arsenal face but he's got great feet you know and really as a defender you can't go and dive in you really do have to be on your metal against this fella well in almost
almost every respect but the scoreline. Arsenal in control of this game. Williams managed to head it back across goal there. Youngberg back to Petit. Adams still in there again. They've almost got too many men getting in each other's way there, Arsenal. Oh, there's not enough bodies in the box, and it's Patrick Vieira. Perhaps had uh, two or three guilt-edged chances, but he just loses his footing here because the ball comes to him via Tony Adams, and there you can just see his left boot went away from him. Joe Jim offside at the other end. Well, what a pivotal moment of the season this is. Because you would instinctively believe that if Manchester United were to score again, it might be all over. However, if Arsenal can get a breakthrough themselves, well, there's still a possibility. But it's all ifs, ands and buts. Petit. to defend stubbornly with skill a lot of good fortune at times but uh, with great discipline as well you have to say here's Dixon what a layup that was by Canu but uh, it was well read by Draper I think Eki Hogg's been magnificent this afternoon Alan. he really has been at the heart of everything that Villa have had to do defensively he's blocked he's headed he's tackled he's given a magnificent display again just get the feeling that the crowd are beginning to lose a little bit of hope here at Highbury quite subdued at the moment an Arsenal goal could change that though Petit Vieira Canu brilliant play and sets it up almost anyway for Vieira but it was another good interception by Southgate that's what we were talking, he's got a great feet, he really has. Overmars. Lee Dixon joins in now. Third camp, the target. Ehiog got it away. Dixon. Harla being forced into that corner. And again, that's good defending by Villa. However, that little moment of confusion has given Arsenal a break. And a great run by Overmars. Uh, by Jungberg, rather. The ball clipped in and again, Villa stand firm. Petit. Adams. Now Vieira. Petit again. Can do in the box. Adams has stayed forward as well. And will continue to do so because they've got a corner well again you've got to say good defending by Aston Villa they really have competed very well they came with a great determination here to Highbury and they're hanging on likely to turn this game and certainly it was really Villa who coped very well defensively with most corners most crosses really clearly have got underneath that ball and Canu well it was a great first touch and Michael Oakes really didn't know anything about it it came in late it came through a number of bodies and what a wonderful calm composed finish every time that Canu has scored for Arsenal they've gone on to win if that happens again, who knows? There could yet be another twist in this incredible tale. I'm sure you all know the permutations, but basically, if Arsenal win and Manchester United don't, then the title crown stays at Highbury. But Manchester United are winning at the moment. And victory for them means that Old Trafford will have the championship flag. 
Oh, what incredible tension. I can't remember too many occasions coming into the last day of the season when it's resting on something that's just so tight and really how they would love Tottenham now to get an equaliser over at Old Trafford. There's Keogh. Goals flying in elsewhere now. Liverpool having a good end to their season. Paul in scoring to make it Liverpool 3. Wimbledon nil. What a miserable end to the season it's been for Wimbledon though. Well now those transistor radios will be turned up just a notch or two higher by all the fans who have them here at Highbury. Wondering, hoping, praying that Tottenham, Tottenham of all teams, can do them a favour. Can who wants it back? He's perfectly placed. Overmars decided to go for goal himself, though. Vieira, Petit. Parla. Now Dixon. Glorious return ball and an excellent clearance by Ricky Schimmicke. Well, I think whatever else happens, we're going to see a lot more of Canoe next season. Third cap lifts one over, looking for Overmars. Almost. Well, there's a lot of indecision now in that Villa defence when they look so composed, they've defended very well, and Burkham's audacious flick. Eggyhawk thinks. That Michael Oakes is just behind him. Perhaps a shout or a stronger shout may have helped. But certainly Mark Overmars, I don't think, realised what a great opportunity he had. Arsenal 1, Aston Villa 0, Manchester United 2, Tottenham Hotspur 1. And incidentally, with West Ham beating Middlesbrough, a defeat for Villa today would uh, end their hopes of a place in Europe next season. Canoe's just given a different option, hasn't he, to Arsenal. Both him and Burkamp look to come into feet. They're so skillful. There's Petit. Overmars. Arsenal may feel, I'm sure, that they need another goal to be sure of victory here. Jungberg. Now Dixon. Third cap. Great skill. Oh, that would have been some goal. <laughs> Absolutely magnificent. Great ball in from Dixon in that wide right position. And Burkham does superbly well. Just look how composed he remains. Great technique to even get a strike at goal. A couple more goals have gone in in the last couple of minutes. John Aloisi equalising for Coventry against Leeds United. 1 1 there. Chelsea, thanks to Luca Vialli, have gone 2 0 up against Derby. Chelsea, remember, are guaranteed third place. As Merson looks for Joe Chip and fails. 20 minutes to go at Highbury. What's going to happen at the end of the 90 here? And Arsenal going to have to settle for the runners up position. Could Tottenham Hotspur help them out with an equalising goal at Old Trafford? Reception there from Southgate. Right finds Schimmicke. It's a slightly unreal atmosphere now. The fans don't seem to know quite how to react in this situation. They're amazingly quiet, aren't they, considering their side need to win. Jungberg finding Bergkamp. Now Parler. Swedish international in possession again. Petit. Uh, kept the target here, and here he is! Well, you would have really put money on him finishing that. Well, he's normally so proficient, isn't he, in those areas. It's a magnificent ball from Petit. Just really find himself in behind Gareth Southgate. We've seen him score a number of those goals from those positions, haven't we? In the past, and Dennis Burkamp so unlucky. 
Some changes going on now for Villa. And Darius Vassell is coming on. Bit of confusion there for a moment. None of the Villa players knew who was going off either. Steve Watson and Simon Grayson finally are the men who are removed. And Darius Vassell and Mark Delaney on in their places. Delaney will just slot into a right-back position, but what now Villa know they must do is score goals, and Vassal will go into a more advanced role alongside Joe Chim, and Merson will perhaps just play in that hole behind. Delaney, the wing-back they signed in March from Cardiff City. And they've won a few so far, and that was against Nottingham Forest. Plays it long. Adams clearance. Petit. Yeah. I understand Southampton have scored a second goal crucially at the Dell. Pahar's the scorer again. And that means that things are looking good for them and looking very bad indeed now for Charlton Athletic. The last time we heard Charlton were still drawing their match against Sheffield Wednesday. They have to win and hope that Southampton either draw or lose. Now it looks as though Southampton are going to win and stay up anyway. Still 18 minutes of football remain in this unbelievable, unforgettable season. And we wonder if that is going to be the final curtain call, which will change the picture yet again. It always comes to this time when you're thinking, if only we'd done that at a certain ground, if only we'd picked up the point instead of losing, if only we'd scored another goal. And Arsene Wenger perhaps will have time to reflect on that this week. Will he retain the championship? Well, if Tottenham were to score, it would be the most amazing finale here at Highbury. That much you can be assured. And the old pro there, Lee Dixon, knew exactly what he was doing. Well, Manchester United have got quite an important uh, week, haven't they, one way and another? <laughs> it's the FA Cup final, of course, next Saturday against Newcastle United, which you can see. Our programme begins at noon on Sky Sports 2. It's a matter of the European Cup final after that as well. At the moment, the treble is on for United. Into the final quarter of an hour at Highbury. Once again, the crowd's mood seems to have changed. And whose goal lifted them. There's almost an air of resignation about the supporters at the moment, Brian. Yeah, it's a huge disappointment, isn't it? I think that they've realised how close it's become, but you'd almost think in surprise that they're not really cheering their side on in a greater fashion. Because they've had a marvellous season, no matter what happens today, what Arsenal have done this year has been tremendous. Still they listen. Still I hope. Arsenal free kick. Taken early by Bergkamp. The team. Vieira. Now Keo. Keep ball for Arsenal. Dixon. Loses out. Now Draper. This is right for Villa. The goal for them, of course, would give us another change. And maybe they'll get one here with Joe Chip. Oh, good save by David Seaman. However, I think the referee's going to uh, produce a card here for the attempt by Tony Adams to stop Joe Chip. Well, it's presumably good, give a free kick as well. It's a good play from Julian Joachim. Yeah. He certainly doesn't give it up here. And Tony Adams just gets a little bit mixed up. And you can clearly see him holding Joachim back. And David Seaman 
made a very good save indeed. He wasn't to know that Dermot Gallagher had blown his whistle. Wright and Draper, the two Villa men over the ball here. Merson also involved in the discussions. Draper takes Swick off the defender. Corner. Well, the wall did its job, didn't it? Mark Draper is trying to bend this into the top corner. You can just see there a flick off Patrick's head. Still 13 minutes remaining at Highbury and right about the same time at Old Trafford. Canu, because that's what would have been a corner there. to get forward and lost his patience and gives it away that was an ambitious ball for Ray Parler I, I do believe that uh, Petit coming to left back has certainly been detrimental towards Arsenal Petit has done very well at left back and Parler has certainly not done a bad job in there but Petit just gives them that just that extra little bit of quality and over Mars is away here <laughs> goal kick there he are strong as an ox once again he was out for three months with that very serious eye injury a fractured eye socket and he's only uh, made a couple of substitute appearances since then this is his first start since the injury he was actually sent off playing against arsenal on the final day of last season there's joe chip now mercer oh, what a story he could have written there as one of Arsenal's former heroes might well have hammered the final nail in their championship coffee. Well, Vassal does well, and the front three really combine exceptionally well. But Paul Merson isn't far away, is he, from tucking that one home. It was quite ironic, actually, the cheers that he got from the Arsenal fans behind the goal for missing the chance. Well, Villa are the only club who've managed to score more than one goal against Arsenal in the Premiership this season moment they're struggling to get even one well, there's been a flurry of goals in the last few minutes Telfer scoring to rename Coventry's lead or rather give them the lead they went one down didn't they against Leeds United and West Ham have got a third now Sinclair the scorer there against Middlesbrough Sinclair, in fact, I'm told, has just got another one, so it's gone to 4-0. And Nottingham Forest, through Bart Williams, have taken the lead against Leicester City. Forest, of course, already relegated. Calderwood's going off here to be replaced by Steve Stone. Steve Stone, surprisingly left out of the starting lineup today. And Diawara has come on for Arsenal to replace Mars over Mars. Into the last 10 minutes. Out there by Bergkamp. Play on, says the referee. Oaks in possession. Just confirming the, the Villa change. Arsenal free kick. And Arsenal have won the last seven Premiership matches in a row here at Highbury. And the last time they went an entire, entire season rather undefeated here, they won the title under George Graham in 1991. Looks like they're going to emulate one of the by remaining unbeaten today. But will victory be enough Dixon Parler now Vieira did well there Petit Canu well, he was given offside yep I think he was disappointed with this and you can just see him straying again in behind what's been a very good line for the best part of this game by the Villa back three. Merson looking for Steve Stone down the right. 
materials just on the line again. What a very adaptable, versatile player he is. Having played so much of this game at left back, and looking so comfortable. Stowe. Free kick done against Petit this time. Well, the one thing Arsenal won't want to do is concede something at this stage. If you're going to go out with a season with a bang, certainly a victory. It may not be happening for them as far as the title goes, unless things dramatically change in these last eight minutes. It's a very poor free kick. He needs to be played in front of him that tomorrow, right? With his quality, you would expect better return well eight minutes of the season remain as things stand it are about to take Arsenal's title away from them the referee is about to reach for his cards again here I suspect Raper's going to be in trouble yeah it's a good run from Ray Parler a great burst from midfield you can see there he was clearly on his way through to goal and Mark Draper on a clumsy challenge caution for Draper free kick for Arsenal Adams on the back post good defending from the youngster Delaney because uh, he's up against such a, an old campaigner and Tony Adams and really Delaney's done extremely well just to put himself up against Adams at the far post I hear a scoreline from the Valley where Sheffield Wednesday have taken the lead against Charlton now Sonno the scorer and that of course really will seal their fate I would think with Southampton in the lead in their match against Everton, it looks like Charlton are going back to the nationwide league. Chance for Mercer. Oh! David Seaman gets away with mishandling it. And with Marcel coming in on him, he got to recover. Well, it's a very good snapshot from Paul Mercer, and it comes to him late. Good first touch. The ball comes behind Tony Adams. I think that may have just put David Seaman off, but he certainly scrambled the ball safely into his hands. Jim finding Merson who goes down is going to be a bit of free kick. Reaper. This is right. Reaper opens it up for Steve Stone. He's ball in. Keown had to reach that. Five minutes to go now. Looked it like Arsenal have completed their part of the bargain. But at the moment. The title is going to Old Trafford, Manchester United. But a goal for Tottenham Hotspur would change that situation in one moment. Carlos Cross, Canu, there's Diwara rather, arriving on the end of it. Canu was coming in behind him. Oh, this is a great chance. It's a wonderful ball from Ray Paul. And Diwara there, cleanly with oceans of space plenty of time to really direct his header he hasn't scored since he's come here and certainly with headers like that you can see why and he had three great chances of course up at Leeds on Tuesday 31 goal attempts by Arsenal today Ehiog clears high into the sky it's got out Arsenal throw Clock ticks down here at Highbury. Four minutes of the season remaining. Canu in possession for them. Sets one up for Patrick Vieira. Oh, that was close. Well, it's that man again, Canu. Absolutely magical, his footwork. In and around the box. He's always lucky to just suck defenders in. And this is beautiful play. Just takes it down the outside and then ends up cutting a ball back to Patrick Vieira, who's got a lot of time, a lot of space, but unfortunately can't hit the target. Paul Merson. Here's Stone. And again, uh, 
Madison. Good looking ball. Oh, that really was the chance there for Jan Vassell. Well, it was a good chance. It's a super ball from Paul Merson. And we talked at the other end with Diawara's header, and really Vassell just can't get over the ball to direct it towards goal. Still, I understand, around about six minutes remaining in the Manchester United Tottenham game. They kicked off about three minutes later than the game here at Highbury. So it's likely that Arsenal are going to complete their season without knowing their fate immediately. Get Tackle there by Dixon. Only two minutes remaining here. What a strange, muted atmosphere around Highbury. It wasn't a bad effort, that by Merson. <laughs> Certainly David Seaman had to glance to make sure he didn't step back too far. Terrible throw out, though, by the England keeper. He's got away with it. Adams. And now Draper. Clumsy ball there by Parler. But Keown cleans it up nicely. Excellent header from Bergkamp finding Jungberg. Into the last minute of the season. Here at Highbury, foul on Dennis Bergkamp. Arsenal get a free kick. Southgate might get the yellow card as well. Well, it's a clumsy challenge from Gareth Southgate. He knows that Dennis Bergkamp is so wily in situations like that. He's nicking the ball away from him. And a yellow card for his troubles. Well, remember, still a few more minutes to run at Old Trafford, so we won't immediately know, unless there's another goal up there, of course. Manchester United what the uh, outcome is going to be on the final whistle here Canu for Arsenal Bergkamp Parler with a low ball in and given away by Jungberg Vieira wins it back Bergkamp Canu in the middle goal kick and an opportunity for Brian Marwood to tell us who is his selection as today's man of the match. Well, I think there's been one or two good performances for Villa. Eki Hogg has been outstanding at the heart of the defence, but for me, Patrick Vieira has been so driving, so dominant in that midfield area. He has worked prodigiously in there. He's lost his midfield partner, Manu Petit, but really he has run the show in that particular area. Stoppage time being played. Arsenal in the lead, but so are Manchester United at Old Trafford against Tottenham. And if the scorelines stay that way, United will be the new Premiership champion. It's hardly a new experience for them. And Arsenal have given possession away. Stone. This is Jochen. Good run forward as well by Stone. Vieira has conceded the corner. That's a superb tackle from Patrick Vieira. One minute he's attacking, the next minute he's making vital tackles in the box. Delaney. And now Merson. Awkward clearance there for Dixon. Jungberg finds Parler. Going to the last minute of time added now. Here's Dennis Bergkamp. Couldn't quite finish off with a flourish. 
Derby County have just scored at Stamford Bridge. Carbonari there with a couple of minutes to go. Chelsea still leading 2-1. the only seconds remaining now and indeed there is the final whistle and the final match of Arsenal's season they have beaten Aston Villa by a goal to nil so Arsenal move on to 78 points they're still playing 200 miles from here at Old Trafford but there are only a couple of minutes to go there and Manchester United are leading Tottenham Hotspur by two goals to one if United win, they will have 79 points and they will have the championship. There's got to be a miracle for Arsenal now and there isn't much time for that to be accomplished by Tottenham Hotspur. The Villa crowd are applauding their own fans and the Arsenal players doing likewise. ...for Nigel Winterburn. It was well won by Keogh in that tackle. Now Anelka pulling Colin Calderwood away from the middle. Trying to turn him. Lee Dixon's made a forward run in this attack. Here's Petit. This is Vieira. 